friends in Jesus Christ, welcome to Crosstown Covenant Church in the unique days and season in which we find ourselves. We've put, we're putting together this presentation today that you might be blessed and encouraged to love and to serve Jesus in these days. Let us know that this is a day and a season for us to love one another Jesus said, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. We have a unique opportunity to do that in these days. While our Sunday services will not meet uh, at the Crosstown building nor Wednesday Connection, the building is still open during the week for various groups of 10 to 12 people. A number of our commissions are meeting this week as we seek to advance in loving one another at Crosstown and in loving our community. In addition, we have opportunity and challenge to love God. Our verse of the year reminds us, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And so we are working that as of next Sunday, we will have home groups ready. Further information will be communicated to you. Let us worship God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Would you join me in the doxology this morning? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And would you join me in a prayer of confession? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Our Bible reading this day comes to us from a singular verse, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, beginning in the first chapter and the 18th verse. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but to we who are being saved, we know it is the very power of God, the word of the Lord. We're told that in the first 150 years of the Christian church, that the cross was at first avoided because of its shameful association with a common criminal. And so when we consider the visual representations in the first 150 years of the church, we see that there was a fish and the acronym, acronym ICTHUS, Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. Another common visual representation of the church was a shepherd carrying a lamb. There was also a stone rolled away, signifying the hope of Easter. And I would think, why isn't Easter and the empty tomb the signature icon of the Christian faith? But that is not what we find. Instead, instead there's this follower of Jesus, an African person, his name Tertullian. And in the year 200, in the North African city of Carthage, today Tunisia, Karth Tertullian says this, At every step forward 
at every going in and out, when we put on our clothes and shoes, when we bathe, when we sit at table, in all the ordinary actions of daily life, we place upon our forehead the sign. Tertullian is talking about the sign of the cross, and by the year 200, it had become, the cross had become the signature expression and visual representation for disciples of Jesus. Why? The curiosity of the cross, that is our focus in this season, as we journey with Jesus to the cross. Curious is defined as that which is strange and unexpected. And in this passage today, in this singular verse, 1 Corinthians 1, the 18th verse, the, the 23rd verse, we hear these words. Paul says, we preach that Christ was crucified. We preach that Christ was crucified. Really? That's our message? Especially in the early centuries of the church, or even today, that's... That's our message. Our world views the cross as crazy, as ludicrous. Historically, the cross has been viewed as nonsense, as a signature sign of horror and shame, an anchor of defeat. How is it that the cross can stand as our lead? How is it that Paul can exalt in the cross? We preach that Christ was crucified. One Bible teacher puts it this way, that in this verse, Paul has taken the central event at the heart of the Christian story, the cross, the death of Jesus, and used it as the lens through which all human experience must be projected and thereby seen afresh. According to Paul, according to the word of God, God's power and wisdom in the cross are amazing and baffling and shocking. A common term we use today is, is counterintuitive. The cross defies human logic and rationality. On the cross, God has decisively intervened in history. In, in the Bible, picking up on the message of the cross, John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, says this in 1 John 3.16. 1 John 3.16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And so we are to lay down our lives for one another. This week, with the uh, realities of our day and the current pandemic in which we find ourselves. I rummaged around a bit in the history of a civilization and I got updated a bit on epidemics in world history, which have been incredibly common, not in our day, but as long as human beings have walked the planet, there have been plentiful epidemics. 2,400 years ago, there was a, a Greek historian, his name was Thucydides. And in his work, he writes and comments about the lack of love that was expressed by, well, himself and his fellow Greek citizens in the face of epidemics faced then. Thucydides writes, they died with no one to look after them. Indeed, there were many houses in which all perished through lack of any attention. We're told that in the history of the world, when, when epidemics struck a particular city, it was common that one-fourth to one-third of the total population would perish. I found it interesting and noteworthy to learn that the last epidemic in this fair city of Minneapolis was 1924 to 1925, smallpox. 
and of those afflicted with that illness, 25% perished. Thankfully, we are not facing mortality rates of anywhere near that number. Still, as we think about epidemics and the cross and the love that Jesus expressed there and calls us to embrace, we can learn and know that this is a unique opportunity and season for us to lean into our faith and hope in Jesus Christ. There's a sociologist, his name is Rodney Stark. And a number of years ago, he wrote this volume, The, the Rise of Christianity. And Stark asks a, a, a question, how is it that the Jesus movement in the span of 300 years went from right about a thousand people in the year 40? In the year 40 AD, there were about a thousand believers in Jesus to 310 years later, there were 34 million. How did that happen? And uh, of course, we understand it was the work of God, but sociologist Stark looks at it from a human conception. And he said that there were three dynamics that the early church exhibited in the face of epidemics. View of women, martyrs, and, and uh, view of women, because the uh, women were not highly regarded in the ancient world. And the, and the Christians said, women, they're 52% of the population. They're crafted in God's image. Let's, let's include women fully and completely. And so the church grew and there were martyrs who were, who were executed for their faith. And that attracted the attention of the unbelieving world. But there was one signature movement exhibited by our predecessors in faith, our sisters and brothers in Christ on whose shoulders we stand. Love one another. Followers of Jesus in the, in the midst of epidemics evidenced and exhibited incredible love both for one another in the church and for persons outside of the church. In commenting on this, Stark notes the idea that Christians express love for God by loving human beings was in the first centuries of the world revolutionary. No, no, no one no one viewed things that way. The African disciple of Jesus, Tertullian, says it is our care of the helpless, our practice of loving kindness that changes the mind of our opponents, our love. It is love that has uh, led us to make the decision to uh, cease public corporate worship gatherings. But know, as I mentioned earlier, that host sites are coming March 22nd and further information will be available. Early followers of Jesus loved one another. They loved their neighbors. How might the Holy Spirit be calling you to love your neighbor this week and in this next month and in this season? And also we are told that our predecessors in Jesus in the early centuries of the church had an incredible sense that they belonged to Jesus. Another African Christian bishop of Alexandria, Egypt, an individual by the name of Dionysius, said this, while the population is terrified. Know anyone who's terrified? Potentially even ourselves? We know fear and anxiety, yes. Dionysius writes, while the population is terrified as epidemics move through the population, Christians are greeting the epidemic as schooling and, and testing. As schooling and testing. Oh, so this is an opportunity. What a perspective in this day, in this time, that we lean into Jesus. 
that we lean into loving God and growing stronger in our journey with Jesus, that we lean into one another, all right? Maybe not physically, but metaphorically, that we care for one another, that we, that we love one another. And in this incredible moment of social distancing, that we see that social distancing does not result in social isolation. Who can you call? Who can you text? Who can you email today to express love and care for them and call them in an appropriate way to know that Jesus is with us even as we face these days? The cross of Jesus Christ, it is our hope even and especially today. My lifetime signature quote about the cross comes from the British pastor, John Stott, who wrote some time ago, I could never believe in God if it were not for the cross. In the real world of pain, how could one worship a God who was immune to it? The tortured figure on the cross, Stott writes, that is the God for me. He continues, on the cross, we know that Jesus laid aside his immunity to pain. He entered our world of flesh and blood, tears and death and viruses. He suffered for us. Our sufferings become manageable in the light of Jesus' victory on the cross. We preach Christ crucified. It is our hope, it is our life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your Son, Jesus. Thank you for the cross especially in this season of unknowns, of fear, of isolation. God, thank you for taking a symbol that used to signify violence and horror and shame and for bringing it to mean something about hope and redemption and love. God, show us what it means this week to preach Christ crucified in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we interact with others. Help us walk in a spirit of love, even when so many around us are afraid. God, help us know how to reach out to one another, how to support one another, and how to really be the church in such a time as this. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And friends in Jesus Christ, let us know and receive the blessing of God. Let us know that Jesus Christ will guide us and see us through this season. We have reason to hope, for we know the God who says, Never will I leave you. Never, ever, ever will I forsake you. Amen.